Hey guys, how's it going? Back again. I want to finish up this run through of Colossians. We'll call it Colossians this time. And so it's chapter 4, and I can just tell by looking at this, there's not really a whole lot there. There's only 18 verses, and a big portion of the, the last end of it here is final greetings, which kind of has to do more with, you know, the people at the time. And, you know, uh, it's not that it's not useful or that we can't learn anything from it, but it's not as informative as, you know, the rest of the epistle. Uh, but there are, there's this little sec section of further instructions, uh, you know, some good stuff there. And I can see there's a lot of names and stuff I'm not really going to be able to pronounce in the final reading section. And those are the things to where, you know, I try doing like the King James audio Bibles and I read the Romans or whatever. And then like in the final chapter of the epistle, you know, he has these greetings and it's mentioning places and names of people and stuff that I don't know how to pronounce, so that kind of halts me on those. And it's like, okay, I have to, I'm gonna have to listen to some other audio Bibles, you know, some Alexander Scorby or something, just to learn how to pronounce each one. And I'm gonna have to do it like verse by verse. So it's a bit more of a chore to do that, but you know, I want to complete those and then do more of those too, anyways. But, um, so verse 1, Masters, give unto your servants that which is just and equal, knowing that ye also have a master in heaven. And uh, so we see Lord means master as well, uh, not just deity. It doesn't just mean that Jesus is God, but that he is master. And we see that a lot in scripture, and easy believers and people want to deny that. So this is just continuing off from the last chapter, the rules of the Christian households. And uh, then we're going into the further instructions. And, uh, you know, we see a lot of, you know, treat others as, you know, Christ treated you. You know, forgive others as, you know, Christ forgave you. And, you know, give unto your servants that which is just and equal, knowing that you have a master in heaven. Um, so, you know, be graceful to others and give mercy to others as Christ has you know, given us grace and mercy and given us kindness, you know, uh, you know, he was kind to others. So, further instructions continue in prayer. Prayer is always a huge thing, and, you know, I've uh, worked on verses and prayer and stuff, and I never really came out with videos about that stuff, but, you know, I've tried to do some prayer videos and that's something I want to continue to, and I mean, prayer in my personal life, you know, without recording it and everything, but, you know, we always need to be praying, and uh, we see that in Scripture all the time. Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. Um, and watch in the same with thanksgiving. Okay. And so, you know, be thankful in our prayers. And uh, with all praying also for us, that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in bonds. And we see that a lot if you've been to churches and stuff since you've been saved and everything. You'll see, you know, praying for doors of opportunities to be open for the gospel to be preached in different countries and different areas and different cities and different circumstances, you know. So, and they get that as an example from the scripture, and, you know, that's perfectly biblical. That's something we should be praying for. That I may make it manifest as I ought to speak, walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time, you know, spending our time wisely, um, serving the Lord, let your speech be oy with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how ye ought to answer every man. And so... We see our speech uh, with grace, and then speaks of being seasoned with salt, and kind of think of that parable of, um, you know, how we are the salt of the earth that Jesus spoke of. And, uh, you know, a lot of callbacks to the things that Jesus said in parables and stuff in the Gospels, you see in the epistles. And uh, so... Uh,
We'll continue on to the final greetings, and I might just skip through some of this. Like I said, it's just a lot of names of people. It's just a lot of uh, things at that time. Uh, all my state shall Tychius declare unto you, who is a beloved brother, a faithful minister, and a fellow servant in the Lord. You see, you know, more high reports given of people whom I have sent unto you for the same purpose, that he might know your estate and comfort your hearts. With Onesimus, a faithful and beloved brother, who is one of you, they shall make known unto you the things which are done here. Aristarchus, 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 <laughs> my fellow prisoner saluteth you, and Marcus, sister's son to Barnabas, touching whom you received commandments, if he come unto you, receive him. And Jesus, which is called Justice, who are of the circumcision, these only are my fellow workers unto the kingdom of God, which have been a comfort to me. Epaphras, who is one of you, a servant of Christ, saluteth you, always laboring fervently for, your, for you in prayers, that you may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. And there we see perfect again and complete used together. Perfect and complete. So that could just be, you know, one idea there being expressed. You know, completeness uh, in all the will of God. For I bear him record that he hath great zeal for you and them that are in Laodicea and them in Hierapolis. Salute the brethren which are in Laodicea and Nymphus and the church which is in his house. And so there we see, you know, the church which is in his house. I'm guessing that's, you know, a lot of people would say that's literally speaking of like a literal house. So they're having fellowship in their home, gathering there. And that's where the idea of house churches come from, comes from. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um... And when this epistle is read among you, cause that it be read also in the church of the Laodiceans, that you likewise read the epistle from Laodicea. And say to Archippus, Take heed to the ministry which thou hast received in the Lord, that thou fulfill it. The salutation by the hand of me, Paul, remember my bonds, grace be with you, amen. And then I think they added this, written from Rome to... Colossians by Tychus and Onesimus. The salutation by the hand of me, Paul. I don't really know what to say about a whole lot of that. Um, it's just a lot of stuff that was kind of specific for the time, and they all knew these people and stuff. Speaking highly of a lot of these people, uh, pretty much all of them, I guess. Um... So yeah, that's Colossians 4. I think the, the main neat part of this would be, you know, the first six verses. Um, but Colossians, it's a pretty small epistle. Uh, another really good one like Philippians where there's not a lot of, you know, rebuking who he's talking to and stuff. It's a lot of encouraging, a lot of instructions, how to live as a Christian. You know, you got the whole put on the new man, put off the old man. And up in the chapter 3, which is really good. And um, so, yeah, that's that. And uh, chapter 3 might actually be like the standout chapter here. But I'd like to go through Philippians and Colossians, like I said, and look at the, the main verses. And, and I just want to do a more detailed expository. But I might jump on to one of the other epistles or, or some other book or something. I'm not really sure. But um, I'll probably do more of the shorter ones. Might not go into Corinthians for a while because you know there is a lot more detailed stuff there than obviously Romans um, and, and some of Thessalonians is kind of baffling a little bit, especially Second Thessalonians. But um, yeah, I would like to go over more of these, so I'm not really sure what I'll do next, but I might do something here shortly. Thanks for watching. God bless.